In this video, we're going to talk about the Intermediate Value Theorem. So the Intermediate Value Theorem says that you let A and B be real numbers such that A is smaller than B. Now, if the function f is a polynomial function such that your f of A does not equal your f of B, then in the interval from A to B, the function f takes on every value between f of A and f of B. So it's important to note that if the signs of f of A and f of B are the same, then the intermediate value theorem is inconclusive. What we're really looking for here is a sign change to occur. So are we going to go from something that was positive to something that was negative, from something negative to something positive? And so in this situation, we're looking at kind of all positive things happening, but we see that this value right here sits in between A and B, and that our a value was smaller than our B value. If I had a point that was, let's say, here, and that was my A, and then I still use this point B here, this output, this F of A, would end up being a negative value, as we can see down here in the negative area. And so because I'd have a negative change to a positive change, that would tell me that I am crossing my x-axis somewhere in between there and I would need to have an answer or a zero there. So why is this useful? Well, in most cases, the real zeros of a polynomial are difficult or impossible to determine algebraically. So for example, the function f of x equals x to the fourth plus 6x to the third minus 26x plus 15 has zeros at negative one plus or minus radical six and negative two plus or minus radical seven. Well, at this point, we don't have the tools to find the zeros of this function analytically. However, we can use the intermediate value theorem to help us search for zeros of a polynomial function and then approximate them. So notice that here we have the graph of that function. And if we're going in between, let's say one and two, so this would be my A value right here where I have an, my A, point A, and here would be my point B. Point A, we see this smaller than point B because point A is 1. So here if I say A is 1, and let's see here, we have that kind of right here. But this is my A, and this is my B, and I plugged them in. Notice here I have a sign change. I go from something negative to something positive, which means that there must be a 0 that lies between them. There must be a zero that lies between them. And we can see this actually occurring on a table as well. Let's go ahead and let's look at it on a graphing calculator. We're going to plug in that equation. So we're going to have x to the fourth plus 6x to the third minus 26x plus 15. And we can pull up the table there. And so notice here, in this first set, from negative 2, negative 1, 0, we have all positive numbers, and then boom, we hit a negative number, and then we're back to positive again. So we see that something is occurring between our 1 and our 2. Looking farther back, we can see that same thing occurring here between negative 4 and negative 5, which we can see on our graph happening as well. So if we were being asked to do this as a problem, Let's see how we would do that. So if we were asked to show that the function f of x, which equals x to the fourth plus 6x to the third minus 26x plus 15, has a zero on the interval from 1 to 2, how would we do that? So this is our a and this is our b. We see that a is in fact smaller than b. So we are going to begin by plugging in those values. So we're going to plug in our a, make that a 1, and we're going to plug in our b, which is 2, into our equations. All right, so we're going to plug in a 1 to all of our x spots, and we're going to plug in a 2 to all of our x spots. And we're going to see that this is going to give us a negative 4, and this is going to give us a 27. So this would be the work that I would show to start this problem, because I would need to show that I'm going from a negative to a positive, okay, from a negative to a positive. So since our f sub one, or our f of 1 and our f of 2 have opposite signs, 
Then, by the intermediate value theorem, we know that the function has at least one zero on the interval from one to two. So at this point, we would be done. We would be able to say that by the intermediate value theorem, there exists at least one zero on the interval one to two. And that would be our answer right here. Because all it asked us to do, right, was to show that it has a zero on that interval. And we've done that. And we know from up here that we've got our answers, that those are the zeros that it has. But specifically on that interval, the one on the interval is one, excuse me, negative one plus radical six. But you're not necessarily being asked to find that just to, again, show that it has a zero on that interval, which if you're doing it by a decimal would be approximately 1.45. which is something that you could use your graphing calculator to find, at least in decimal form. But again, this is how you would show that a zero exists, at least one zero exists on that interval.